I will be highlighting the things today about the small ruminants, feed technologies, and the feeding habits only differ. In sheep, it is grazing, and in goat, it is browsing. So almost the feed requirements more or less same. So today, I will be telling about the processing of feeds and the processing of refuges and the preservation methods and promising technologies at the CSWRA for small remnants and model rations for sheep and goats and practical tips. So as you all know, sheep and goats are five-star animals, mainly for meat, followed by manure, milk, and the skin and the wool. Wherein the feed cost is the major component in any type of uh, management, in semi-intensive or intensive. Only in uh, extensive system, the grazing, wherein also labor is major cost involved. So what are the ways we can minimize the, minimize the cost and maximize the profit by increasing the digestibility, we need to apply the technologies or processing methods. And round the year, round the year, availability of the refuge source is very much essential. So at the scenario at the Avikanagar is the rearing cost of sheep in case of uh, Avishan lambs. Avishan is the pride of CSWR Avikanagar. It is a three breed cross comprising Patan Badi, Malpura, and Garol, wherein twins are common, triplets, and quadruplets. And last year we got uh, five lambs also. Uh, in that way, this lambs survival is very much important. And the scenario here is the supplementary feeding cost per day is 12 rupees per animal, and grazing cost is 12 rupees, and medicine cost is 2 rupees. So almost it is 22 rupees per day for a gainer or a sheep. <laughs> Up to six months, the expenditure is around 4,000. And at the six months, the animal weighs 30 kg and the sale price is 300 per kg live body weight. So that it yields 9,000 rupees per lamb. So the expenditure is 4,000 and 5,000 is the net income. This is the span of for the period of six months. So large number of farmers are waiting in queue to procure Avishan sheep from Avikyanagar. So this is the scenario in intensive feeding uh, also. Only that milk replacer, we named it as Memna Prash. Memna means lamb, prash. Then feed blocks, complete feed blocks, that is, then silage, then area specific mineral mixture, then mineral bricks, and probiotics. These are all the technologies I will be highlighting. But before that, before that, the feed and fodders provides nutrients. So my many of my farmer friends are here and field beds for them refreshing. What these feed and fodders provides various nutrients. What are those nutrients? So nutrients majorly categorized into six items. One is carbohydrate, protein, fat. So almost being met out by one or other way. But vitamins, minerals to be supplemented through supplementation only. And water is essential nutrient. And these are the orders. Coming to the minerals, major minerals. Uh, there are seven major minerals. All these major minerals are required in percentage, starting from 0.1 to 0.8. So calcium. 0.2 to 0.8, phosphorus 0.16 to 0.38, and magnesium 0.12 to 0.18, sodium 0.18, chlorine 0.2, and potassium 0.5 to 0.8, sulfur 0.2. The calcium phosphorus ratio should be 1.5 to 1 ratio. So definitely one should provide mineral mixture to sheep. Coming to the micro minerals, these are required in PPM parts per million. Though the requirement is so small, but their importance is highly relevant because several enzymes in the metabolism having the component of micro minerals, especially copper, cobalt, zinc. 
So these are involved in the process of nutrient utilization as well as metabolism. So these micro minerals to be compulsorily provided in their diet, these deficiency will definitely affect the immunity, growth, and nutrient utilization. This is the place where farmers are missing. Though they provide carbohydrate protein fat, but the assimilation and the absorption and the utilization needs these minerals. So the requirement of copper is 5 ppm and copper 0.1 ppm and manganese 13 ppm, molybdenum 1 ppm, selenium 0.25 ppm, zinc 30 ppm, chromium 1.5 ppm and iron 50 ppm, iodine 0.5 ppm. More or less, it is same for sheep and goats, but in generally sheep are sensitive to copper, but goats are tolerant to copper, where the requirement is little more. And coming to the vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and the vitamin K. So the vitamin E, vitamin E deficiency is very common in salt feeding animals, uh, continuously on the dry, dry roughage feeding. So this is to be taken care of, along with selenium. These two things are very, very important. Otherwise, this will affect the way animal that is sheep and goats health. And coming to the water soluble vitamins, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pantothenic acid, pyridoxine, biotin, folic acid, cobalamin, and choline, then vitamin C. So all these nutrients, carbohydrate, protein, fat, carbohydrate, protein, fat, then major minerals, micro minerals, then vitamins all to be given compulsorily. Otherwise, one cannot expect the optimum production and reproduction. So coming to the title as such, feed technology. Feed technology is the application of physical, chemical, biochemical, and biological, physico-chemical, and engineering methods to increase the nutrient utilization of feeds and fodders. So the steps involved in processing of the feeds and fodders, uh, preparation of formula, that is rations, for which the knowledge of nutritional requirement of small remnant sheep and goats is needed, and quality control of the feed ingredients, and feed plant management, and storage of the feed ingredients and feeds. These all the things to be uh, known. So what is the objective of the feed processing? So it, it makes the feed more palatable, and it detoxify or remove undesirable toxic principles and make the storage easy and safe and increase the nutrient content and the nutrient availability and to change the particle size or density of the feed and to make the animal production more economical, feed processing is must. So it improves the digestibility and the utilization of animal feeds. So the physical processes include thermal treatment, heat or cold, then mechanical treatment, physical separation, centrifugation, filtration, reduction of water activity, dehydration or addition of solutes and irradiation. Chemical processes such as addition of acid, alkaline, acidizing or reducing agents. Then enzymatic processes such as hydrolysis of proteins and polysaccharides and the inactivation of toxic compounds. Biological processes such as fermentation and germination. So physical processes in that grinding, popping, micronizing, extrusion cooking, roasting, pelleting, dailing, tubing, dehydration, soaking, and hydrogen peroxide and urea treatment and urea immunity technique. And in the biological treatment includes fermentation treatment, the enzyme uh, treatment and the enzyming methods under fermentation technique and the chop and three treated straw with the three to five percent which is steamed at 120 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes and then fermented with the brand type media culture with the cellulitic microorganisms at 40 to 45 degrees for centigrade for two days. So these are all the dry processing of the rice. One is cracking, then pot, micronizing, roasting, grinding, pelting. Then wet processing of the grains. Soaking and reconstruction, steam rolling, steam flaking, pressure cooking, extrusion, exploding, grinding, pelleting, gelatinization. Coming to the advantages of grinding, it is a prerequisite 
for making compounded feed, mixing, pelleting, and extrusion. And grinding increases the particle number and increase the surface area, improve the feed utilization. And grinding avoids the selective feeding of grains and reduces the scope of sorting out of less palatable feeds by the animal from the compounded mesh. Grinding increases compactness and reduces the space requirement for the storage. These are the advantages of grinding. So coming to the roughage processing, this is what's water, chopping, then dry grinding, then pelleting, degradation, tubing. These are the processing for roughage. And wet processing includes urea treatment and silage making. And some of the forages for sheep and goats. Some examples I am giving legumes, healthy, hedge loosen, loosen, stylo, and in cereal grasses, water sorghum, maize water, oats grass, napier, and grasses, guinea grass, buffalo grass, sun grass, or tree. And tree leaves, the top weeds includes moringa, mulberry, squabble, sespania, bubble, and argo. So, fodder components, uh, forage protection and utilization is mainly through the following subsystems. Crop residues and byproducts, 54%. And grazing resources, 18%. And green fodder production under irrigated and rain fence system, 28%. So, the scenario here is crop residues and byproducts are available for feeding of the small ruminants. And green fodder production is less. So these are all the fodder processing methods. First is hay, second is silage, then production of sprouted grains as fodder and concentrate, that is feed processing. So why fodder conservation is important? So in a year, two glut seasons, August to September and February to mid-March here. So, fodder conservation is the essential practice of good herd management program and preserve the surplus fodder in the form of silage or hay during the flush seasons for supplementation during the lean season. So, conservation of fodder is in a season of plenty adds as an insurance against the underfeeding and the economic losses during the scarcity period and maintains all the year round supply of quality refuges for that process. This hay making and silage making is compulsory. So methods of conservation, the silage is a wet process, is a conservation of silage, is under fermentation, and the hay is the dry conservation, and the haylage is conservation in semi-dry condition, and baling and densification, and complete feed blocks and leaf meals. So silage is the preserved green fodder in succulent form under air tight conditions that means anaerobic anaerobic conditions so ensailing is the process which involves the conservation of green fodder crops and grasses and their storage over a long period a good quality silage can be kept or preserved for two years also so good quality silage is yellow yellow is green in color with pleasant major smell the technique is more or less similar to that commonly employed in the preparation of pickles. So crops suitable for silage. So excellent silage may be made from the crops like jowar, maize, bajra, oats and barley. Among the perennial grasses, large amount of surplus fodder is available hybrid apiar grass, kinney grass, paragrass, wooden grass and rose grass. And legumes like bersin, lucerne, and kauti are not suitable for silage making. But however, these legume crop silage can be made successfully by mixing with the peristra or water hyacinths and oats, and even with the maize, maize powder. So these are the important powder crops suitable for ensailing. One is the maize, second is sorghum, and millets, and the napier hybrid, and oats, and guinea grass. And stage of harvesting the crop. The fodder crop should be harvested at a stage when the nutrient content is at peak stage and has produced enough dry matter. Crop must have sufficient power to permit the uh, quick protection of preservative acids, of which lactic acid is the most important. The crop should be neither immature nor over mature. 
and flowering to milk stage is recommended for making silage from maize, jover, oats grass. Grasses should be harvested at the blooming, blooming stage, but hybrid napier and guinea grass should be harvested at 1.5 meter height stage. Good quality silage can be made when the dry matter of the crop is 30 to 35 percent. In other words, the moisture content of the fodder to be reduced from 80 percent to 65 percent. Then only the silage, silage can be prepared. Types of silos, there are many types. One is pit silo, tower silo, trench silo, but the pit silo is recommended. I will be showing the photos of the silos in the subsequent slide. Now the shape of the pit silo is circular or rectangular. The circular pit, the circular pit is better than rectangular one because of the chopped powder has comparatively less surface contact and while filling in air can be expelled easily. And dimensions of the silo, the size of the pit depends on the fodder available for ensailing as well as the silage requirement of the animals. It may be roughly calculated on the basis that one cubic meter of the silo can have 650 to 700 kg of settled silage. One cubic meter, 650 to 700 kg settled silage. A silo pit measuring 3 meter length and 2.5 meter width and 2 meter depth is convenient for making silage for feeding 5 dairy animals, that is for cows, at the rate of 20 kg silage per head per day for 3 months. So, selection of the site for making the silo is dig a circular or rectangular pit of desirable dimension on a site located at the higher elevation and near the animal shed. See, these are the different silage, uh, silos, silos, silo is the structure in which the silage is prepared. See, the first one is below ground trench, then the second one is below ground pits, that is above ground trench, and the fourth one is above ground tower. And this is the kacha uh, silo and this is plastic ground silo. Here we can agar, we are preparing silos by using silage by using these plastic drums. And the other one is the bag, plastic bag silage. So you have to create the PR type anaerobic conditions for the material to ferment. So important points for silage making. Crafts and plant material rich in soluble sugars such as maize, workum, oats, sugar cane tops, hybrid napier grass, and other grasses are highly suitable for ensailing. The dry matter concentration, as I told earlier, should be 30% minimum, and higher 35% dry matter is possible. And chaffing of the material for ensailing increases its compactness, thus eliminating the air space to the maximum extent. And green to semi green forage, which may be used the oxygen present for respiration, results in high quality silage. The silo should be airtight after filling. And fermentation starts within hours after closing the silo and accelerates over the next two to three days. It terminates after about three weeks. Organic acid, primarily lactic acid, acetic acid, and ethanol and gases such as CO2, CH4, and NO2, NH3 are produced during the fermentation process. Due to the protection of acid, the pH of the biomass is reduced to a level below 4, resulting in the termination of all biological activities, after which the material remains conserved under anaerobic conditions for very long time. That is the idea. And coming to the next one, hay. So what is the need of the hay? That is drying process. Monsoon herbages are generally dried for conservation Process in various forms of meal, bales, and pellets. So, hair quality is determined by the species, the amount of lean material in comparison to the stem material, the time of harvest, and the drying condition. So, top feeds from different trees, Albicia, Zigibus, and, and uh, Lucana lucasifala are also useful for making the leaf meal and the feeding animal after drying. This is Bajra, and this is uh, Sorghum and cowpea and blossom. So, legume, two legumes and two non legumes. 
and this is the important points for hay making. The crop harvested for hay making at its pre-flowering or flowering stage, when its growth is leveling up and its feeding value is still high. Hay is best made during rain-free days. Crops with thick and juicy stems should be tried after chopping and conditioning, which will speed up the drying process and slow down the loss of nutrients. Hay should be racked only a few times during the drying process in order to avoid the shattering of leaves and bleaching of the hair. So legumes should be racked in the morning hours uh, to avoid leaf shattering and after drying and curing, baling and or uh, staking should be done as early as possible. Storage under the roof is preferred. For hay baling, the maximum permissible water concentration is 15%, that is moisture content. Storage of the hay before sufficient rain may cause fire due to spontaneous combustion. So, storage of hay with higher moisture concentration may result in mold growth and making the hay unfit for feeding. So, next technology is the production of complete feed blocks. Complete feed blocks could also be prepared by densification machine, densifying machine. So nutritive value of the forage is enhanced through the mixing with molasses. 5% molasses is being added and blending with leguminous powder, concentrated mixture, minerals and vitamin additives. The composition of complete feed blocks included wheat straw 40%, molasses 20%, dry leaves uh, bersin. Uh, 20%, concentrated mixture 19%, and mineral mixture and vitamin additives 1%. So, various combinations, first three, one, two, three are for adult maintenance, and four and five for uh, production. The roughage portion is 65, and concentrate is 30, and the molasses 5. And in production animals, the roughage portion is 60 and the concentrate increased to 35 and molasses 5%. These are all the different complete feed blocks wherein the concentrate level is from 30 to 35%. And various combinations that is monsoon herbages, sankras grass, tree leaves and legume or meal and crops are involved in this feed block. Here at Avika Nagar, we have feed block making machine and the cost of the complete feed block is 18 rupees, but we are not selling to outside persons, only for the farm animals, institute animals, we are using the feed blocks for both sheep and goats. And this is the proven technology, wherein the feed block minimizes the production of methane as well as emission of methane. So in that way, we named this feed block as avifatica, which is palatable, improves the feed intake and modify rumen fermentation. It results in reduction of methanogenesis to the tune of 17.5% in growing lambs. So as a result, increase of 19% in growth and 8.9% in in FCR was recorded. This is our institute technology, Adi Patika. So coming to the next one, leaf meal preparation. So collection, that is harvesting, drying, and size reduction process. So supplementation of leaves improves the feeding value of poor quality refuges. So traditionally, the tree leaves, particularly pala, kajri, ardu, ficus, and neem leaves are also lopped, dried, and fed to animals. So energy feeds and protein feeds, wherein the concentrated ingredients, feed ingredients, carnaceous feeds, high in total digestible nutrient, low in protein, the cereal grains, corn, barley, wheat, oats, grains, sorghum, and rye, and few byproducts. So this high in phosphorus and low in calcium cause the urinary calculi in rams and especially in minors lead to the fever in pregnant and lactating use. So the supplementation of minerals mixture is must. Coming to the proteinaceous feeds, protein quantity is generally more important than protein quality. 
amino acid content in ruminant diets. High levels of protein usually over 20%. Example, soya bean meal, cotton seed meal, and fish meal. So feeding protein above NRC requirement will not usually increase the productivity or carcass quality. So some of the farmers, some of the farmers are still feeding whole grains to their sheep and goats. So the, why, why this, whether feeding sheep whole or processed grains? So the advantages of feeding the grains as such, the feed intake may increase 50%, 25%. Feed intake may increase 25%, while the utilization remains similar for whole and pelleted grain. Growth rate is up to 20% faster with whole grain. Feed conversion is improved by 10%. Whole grain produced by a firmer and more desirable fat finish on the carcass. So whole grain does not cause damage to the rumen if excess feeding definitely will cause the problem of acidosis. So this will be taken care. But we don't normally advise to give whole grains as such. Only the cracked, cracked uh, ground grained material to be given. So another thing is that hydroponics is there, but uh, we are not practicing, we are only experimenting the economical viability of the hydroponics here. But this is a technique can be employed, but uh, whether economically viable for sheep and goats, that has to be investigated and studied further. So coming to the main topic for the today's discussion is the milk replacer. CSWRI has named it as Memna Prash. As I told earlier, Memna means lamb and prash. So it is essential for the Abishan lambs born as twins or triplets or quadruplets wherein the mother milk is insufficient and we definitely need to give this Memna Prash that is the liquid milk formula make it survival. So in that way, we you know 100% survival we could achieve and increase the growth and increase the net returns. So what it contains? So before going for the memna press, we should look at the chemical composition of sheep. The first one is sheep and the last one is goat. We have rabbit, so I have compared rabbit also. The total solids, total solids in sheep milk is 17.5%, whereas it is 12.2% in goat milk. So coming to the sheep milk, the protein content is 5.86 and fat content is 7.28 and lactose is 3.42 and ash 0.94. So in this same fashion, we keep the composition in mind and prepare the milk replacer. So this milk replacer comprises of finely ground grains. Uh, the things are one maize, rice, and wheat, wheat, equal quantity, equal quantity. For example, if you prepare for 10 kg, 10 kg milk replacer, this equal quantity of maize, rice, and wheat, 3 kg. Then finely ground oil cakes, that is why I've been meal and wheat groundnut oil cake and till cake. This is 2.5 kg. I am telling for 10 kg preparation of Venna crush and skimmed milk powder 3.5 kg. So I told the grains 3 kg, oil cakes 2.5 kg and the skim milk powder 3.5 kg. So put together 9 kg. Then vegetable oils including farm oil and refined oil and flaxseed oil 800 ml and mineral mixture 200 gram and vita blend vitamin mixture 2 gram and preservatives uh, additives are one is citric acid 20 grams and putric acid uh, for 5 ml so these are blended together and kept as a mash and before feeding before feeding uh, this for every liter of water, 170 grams. I told the total solids in the sheep milk is 17.5 percent. So we take 17 percent, and uh, for uh, one liter, it should be 170 grams. 
So take 170 grams of this memnopras and uh, the water temperature should be 45 degrees centigrade and mix it, stir it. And by the time we start feeding by the feeding bottle, it will be 43 degrees centigrade, the memnopras. And which can be started after one week and compulsorily it has to be continued for six weeks. Here I just highlight that the sheep milk cost 60 rupees. And this memnopras what we prepare is 126 rupees per kg. And from one kg memnopras, a powder form, uh, we prepare six liters of liquid milk formula. That means one liter costing 21 rupees. So we strip out the milk from the malpura, malpura use. And that milk can be used for feeding the abishan lambs of quadruplets and uh, triplets. And the Malpura lambs will be compensated by giving this Nanapras. So starting with 50 ml, 100 ml, 150, 200, maximum 300 ml, up to from one week to continuing for six weeks, that means seven weeks of age. That means up to 50 days of age, this Nanapras. So in this way, we could save the we could save the money on the natural milk that can be used for preparing seven eight products, sheep milk products. And memnopras is being compensated. This contains minerals and vitamins and provides good uh, growth and digestion. And in that way, it is two way economical. One is that milk, natural milk from you can be used for preparing products. And the growth of the lambs are far, far better and 100% survival. This is most important in any commercial farm where the lamb survival 100% to be there. So this is the very, very important, very, very important point to be noted. And farmers can easily prepare this memna brush by fine grinding of you know, grains, oil cakes, and purchasing skim milk powder and mineral mixture, vegetable oil, and vitamin mixture and this citric acid can be uh, citric acid can be procured from the chemical store and they can easily prepare and as i told earlier the water temperature should be minimum 43 degree centigrade so we keep at 45 degree centigrade and stir it thoroughly and use and for a lamb aged one week and after start with 50 ml and go up to 300 ml Definitely the growth of the lambs, pre-weaning growth is 150 grams daily. We have seen and it is a proven technology. I suggest for my farmer friends here to go for this milk replacer, milk replacer to save the lambs and see the growth, fast growth and make the pre-weaning growth, pre-weaning growth fast. So this is the liquid milk formula we submitted for patent. Here the summary is high survivability and supports higher weight gain and it closely resembles the used milk in its nutrient content and composition and feeding liquid milk formula results in better digestibility of nutrients that is to be highlighted so that the lambs may gain higher by consuming lesser feed. The digestibility of the nutrients is being increased by giving this memna fresh or liquid milk formula. So the economical analysis and validation is the feeding of liquid milk formula results in a net profit of 600 rupees minimum per lamb before pre-weaning. And the validation of the technology produced similar profit to the farmers at field conditions. So in addition to this profit of 600 rupees per lamb, we could get another, another additional income by making the sheep natural sheep milk from that mother and use for sheep milk products, sheep milk products. So this is a promising and proven technology. One can easily adopt at field condition and save the lamb and increase the growth and increase the net returns. And coming to the next proven technology is the area specific mineral mixture. See, some of the areas, the copper, cobalt, zinc are deficient. So, though 
these requirements are so small, but their relevance in the animal system, metabolism, and the digestibility of the nutrients and assimilation and immunity, these plays major role. So this is the Avikya Nagar mineral mixture comprising uh, dicalcium phosphate 35.5 kg per 100 kg and calcium carbonate 4.5 kg, zinc sulfate 1 kg, copper sulfate 1 kg, sodium chloride 58 kg and cobalt chloride 25 grams. And this gives, this gives good results. The, the summary is uh, area specific mineral deficiency was identified based on the intake and requirement of the minerals and mineral mixture pellets based on the required minerals were formulated. A suitable mode of delivery for the supplementation was developed. So daily supplementation of 5 gram area specific mineral mixture pellets in sheep increased the milk yield by 10 to 15 percent, wool yield by 4.5 to 8 percent and bring 60 percent of the unistress sheep into e-stress within 15 to 21 days. This is to be noted. See, not only the production, it helps in the reproduction. So this also we have submitted for patent, obtaining patent. So cost of the feed ingredients here, we have a feed technology unit wherein we produce 4,000 quintals of feed every year and supplying to all sectors. Here seven sectors are there and we are supplying the feed to the various sectors and every month, every month, almost 330 to 360 quintals we produce and the cost of the maize here is 24 rupees barley 28 rupees these are the two grain grains we are using here and the granite oil cake 34 rupees mustard cake 25 rupees sesame cake 42 40 uh, 4 rupees and the soya flakes 70 per kg and the wheat bran 18 rupees rice polish 15 rupees and the molasses 19 rupees these are all the ingredients we keep here and prepare the feed of our own and various rations based on the stage and physiology of the sheep and goats. We prepare the rations in our feed technology unit. So these are the different rations we follow. For growing animals, 76% grains, 21% oil cakes, and 2% mineral mixture, 1% salt. This is for the growing animals. And for adult maintenance, 90% grains and 7% protein and 3% mineral mixture and salt. And for a pregnant animal, 85% grains and 12% oil base and 3% mineral mixture and salt. And lactating animal, 75% grains and 22% protein. Inclusion is needed and 3% mineral mixture and salt. So this is the different rations we follow here for sheep and goats. So coming to another technology, what we have seen and what I have seen here is the probiotics and the lactobacillus culture is being prepared and wheat bran is the base medium and it provides the advantage improves the prevailing growth and reduces the incidence of lamb diarrhea and improves the feed intake and digestibility and gut health. And the dose is fermented skim milk, 1.5 ml per kg body weight and fermented wheat bran, 20 gram per kg of feed. And the utility, if lactobacillus culture is not available, the homemade curd, 20 to 50 ml per lamb, and they can stop the diarrhea and promote the growth and gut health. So the farmer can usually use this homemade curd for the lambs having diarrhea and digestion problem and growth will be definitely improved with the help of probiotics present in it. It's like a baseless culture. And the other one is, this is the technology 
and the production of the yeast fermented feed having activated culture of microbes lactobacillus as a probiotic supplement and it also provides the process of making the uh, fermented probiotic feed product so this feeding this supplement 10 to 30 gram per kg feed in growing young lambs lambs for 90 to 120 days improve the refuge intake by 10 percent growth performance of 8 percent and feed efficiency up to 9 percent it also reduces the incidence of diarrhea that is to be noted and the last technology what we practice here is if the animal we, we decided to cull the animal after seven eight years the productive age is up to six seven years after that if we decided to cull the ewe cull the ewe we used to restructure the culled use by feeding extra nutrients for three months and we could achieve the good body weight by feeding these grains the first one type one concentrated mixture where cereal grains 77 percent and oil cake 20 percent and mineral mixture salt three percent and in type two 83 percent grains 13% oil case and 1% urea and 3% miniature and salt and type 3, 80% grains and 13% oil case, 1% urea and bypass fat that is calcium soap of vegetable oil that is the bypass fat uh, 3% and 3% miniature salt. So these rations were fed to the culled use the use of this body condition score is a very poor and can be fed for 90 days after which the good carcass see the carcass quality is being improved so you slowly adapted to high concentrate feeding up to 2.5 percent of the body weight starting with the lower level 50 gram twice daily so eels are grazed and they are salt fed with equilibrium refuge. The challenge feeding is continued for 90 days. So see the difference between the before feeding and after feeding for 90 days. So this improvement in body condition score is evident and improvement in body weight by 25 to 30 percent is a tremendous improvement. That is 8 kg improvement in 25 kg curl view. So, improvement in carcass yield, improvement in mutton quality with increasing intramuscular fat and tenderness and acceptability. And challenge feeding for 90 day can give this net profit of 300 rupees per cull sheep. In addition to improved carcass quality, what better marketability? These farmers can adapt very well. If they have decided to cull the ewe, after its production is, the reproduction is over, these extra nutrients can definitely fetch good carcass quality and net returns.